So here we are at the Kato Sake Works in Bushwick, Brooklyn, the best city in the world. Kato himself. Hi, I'm Shinobu. Nice to meet you. Uh, I actually found out about this place from Eric. He does the production here. Right? Yes. I met Eric at a sake event, and this was last May, like maybe a year, what, a year ago you guys started, right? Yes. And time went by, and COVID hit, and honestly, forgive me, but I kind of forgot about it, and then I saw, I saw on Instagram that they were open, and immediately I just ran out the door, we came right to sake, or Kato Sake Works, we tried your delicious, refreshing, amazing, clean sake. He's been so gracious and so wonderful as to let us annoy him with this interview. So we officially opened April 1st. We had one weekend of soft openings. Right. And then lockdown here. And we are like, oh my God, this is too small. We cannot let people in. Yeah. So we stopped that and then pivoted to do more bottle sales uh, at the store. And then officially opened in April 1st. Okay. 15, 16 years ago, I decided to come to the US. I came to the US for the business school. Uh, I went to the University of Maryland in college for uh, And then I got a job in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, a large automotive manufacturers. I was doing IT there in a very big corporate setting for like close to 10 years. Uh, and meanwhile, uh, I started home brewing sake by myself. I, I had a struggle to get good sake at a good price. And my friends are brewing beer. Should I brew sake? Back in Tennessee, I had a bigger backyard and kitchen. So okay. I bought a first. I can't imagine why. <laughs> <laughs> so I bought a, a refrigerator, additional refrigerator, and then a small tank, and started steaming rice. Oh, and I invited all my friends. You did that with the, like within your kitchen. Within the kitchen. Okay. Yeah. And then kind yeah. of like spilled up. Yes, filled. exactly. Okay. Exactly. So kitchen to the dining room to a bigger space, and then now I have a blue on it. And that's yeah. how I started. And did then, you know? Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Did you know anything about sake making? Production sake before, or you no, just kind of no. like looked on the internet, or, or no? Although I drank a lot of sake this sure. year, so I invested a lot, you know. Uh, but you know, I was just curious, so started learning via brewing sake brew, and eventually I tried my first batch. The first batch was good, second batch, third batch, and then one time my friend started to ask me, like, hey, can I buy your book? I, I think. Probably you had a moment that you realized that, oh, sake is good. I want to, you know, drink more better sake. The same kind of aha moment for craft beer, aha moment for the good wine, yeah. the same thing. Yeah. What I was seeing for my friend was that kind of moment, I guess. Yeah, right. I had a sake before, but I didn't like that. That one was, you know, a lot of or something like that. Yeah, right. But this one is different. And then I started, I started planting sake. So can I buy your bottle? That's when I started to think, like, okay, I've been complaining about the situation. Right. This okay. might be a solution. But at the same time, knowing that, you know, starting this in Tennessee as a business is a little bit challenging because of the market. Why, why did you move from Nashville to the sea? You seem to be fairly well set up. Mm -hmm. They always say like New York is the toughest place to, yeah. to start, and if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. So yeah, I think that was the argument that my wife made. If yeah. you want to do something, why don't you go to New York? Because that's the toughest cool. place. I mean, if you fail, I like fail, that. Is it I like that a lot. Actually. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's funny because at the same time, she got to go for in Tokyo, so she was like, "Okay, I'm going to Tokyo. <laughs> so it's up to you." But if you're like, right, "I'll see you." Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're doing that, don't stay in Tokyo. That's what she told me. It was difficult first because I didn't know many people here. Somebody introduced me to Krishna Kegar, she's a local artist. And she took me around and I was like, this is a great place, I like it. And somehow I felt like it, this reminds me of my old hometown. Oh, wait. Sure. Yeah. You know, I wanted to make a simple sake. I like to make sake casual. My goal is to give the people on the street opportunities to try good sake. If they want to learn more about sake, and if they want to go deeper, right. there's plenty of opportunities. Let's go to you know, Manhattan and go to Desuka. Sure. And you, or, or, you know, Sakamari. And you can be you know, exposed to much better selection of all the great things. But what I'd like to make is more like an initial step yeah. for the people. Like an introduction. Yes. 
from the college sake bar to a great <laughs> sake that you can find at the Sakakura or Sakamai or yeah. Desuka. Somewhere in between. That's my goal. So my goal is to have like a local or casual sake brewery is more accessible to the people that is not a sake, big sake man. So I've been I've been here twice and I discovered this place last week. Or I just sorry, I discovered that we were open last week. Mm-hmm. Here twice. Uh, both times that I came, uh, you were very generous in letting me try mm-hmm. literally every type of sake, mm-hmm. uh, which, is, which is great. And if you've not done a flat sake, the comparison side by side is I think essential to learn. Mm-hmm. If you want to get into it and really delve into it, I think the the flights are essential because mm-hmm. you get this flavor profile that actually gets this one as compared to that one. If you could describe briefly, if there is a comparison to, to say wine or mm-hmm. beer, and what they pair well with, okay, okay, why should they drink it instead of getting a six pack of beer or mm-hmm. getting a bottle of wine? You know, I'm gonna have pizza. Mm-hmm. What can I drink with this? Well, you know, people call sake rice wine, right? Mm-hmm. Technically speaking, sake is more like rice beer than wine yeah. when it comes to the manufacturing method. But taste profile, yeah, it's probably closer to wine. So, you know, if you are drinking white wine, you know, our sake works perfectly in that sure. kind of setting. You just mentioned about pizza. So, Archie's pizza, Robert pizza, Marinara sauce, our chimai, that's perfect. It's very drinkable and pairs very well with. Our nigori is a cloudy one, hazy one, and it has rice particles still in it. So it has a different uh, mouse feel, and because of that mouse co- coating effect, it pairs very well with hot. Like, you know, there's a great al pastel or taco spread. Yeah. I, I pair with our nigori. And then when it comes to nama, the funkiness or more like expression, uh, it's a little bit loud. So sometimes I warn my customers that maybe it's hard to pair our nama with typical Japanese food. But if you're eating something loud and blood, like, you know, Greek food, right. Ram kebab, right. our nama is a product. But we try to introduce more varieties uh, as well without making things too complex. Yeah. Because the tap room is closed, uh, if people do want to take away, they want to go to a place to enjoy your sake, is there somewhere nearby that they can do that? So right now we only have one customer, restaurant customer, bar customer, uh, which is also new, called the Mika Bushwe, near the syndicated theater uh, in uh, Mogan Avenue Station. Oh, oh nice. I've yes, uh, but they have a nice black beer, and then they do serve our sake, and then they do also have a sake flight. And also, we collaborate with the chef to make some interesting snacks. That's what I'm telling all the customers that if you want to drink right now, just uh, close, yeah, close the Flushing Avenue and go to Mika. Okay. Are you going to stick with what you've got now to kind of perfect that, or do we expect like seasonal sake? Yes, yeah, seasonal that? sake. Also, we, I'd like to introduce every major style of sake yeah. because you know, as I said, our sake is like a beginner sake, right? Right. So, like a beer comparison. At least I want to have lager, IPA, stout, yeah, sure. something like that. I have a couple more recipes that I am kind of playing around, okay. so that at least. You know, I can showcase the, the typical right. range of the sake varieties here. Yeah. If you'll notice, we are drinking out of these wonderful glasses. <laughs> yeah, so we have glassware. We are making t shirts right now. Some of the, you know, the typical merchandise that yeah. you go to a brewery. You know, it's fun to have no, a lot of sure, stuff, yeah. right? And can people order the sake and or the merchandise online? No, right now you need to come here. Well, we are shipping sake to New York State. You heard it here first. Get your sake in the brewery or if you're in New York State, order it online. If you're not in New York State, get somebody who is in New York State (laughs) to order this sake for you and ship it to you because it is definitely worth it. We won't get into the yeah, absolutely. We won't get into the, the color of the shaping, but... Oh, the polishing? Yes, yeah. oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. <laughs>